So for those of you who actually like to start reading a book by starting at the back and getting getting the punchline, I, I wanted to do this presentation just a little bit different and more to your liking. So once upon a time, uh, there was an organization, and it, it led DCG, it led us to actually think through the process of of how one applies agile estimation in a world where you're going to use functional metrics, and why does that work and how does that work. So once upon a time, there was a large software development firm, hierarchical culture, one very large project, but, but significant numbers of other projects going on in the environment. They were using a mixed scrum uh, XP kind of a methodology to do their work, a framework to do their work. And recent addition, by the way, the combination of Scrum and part bits and pieces of XP, I would suggest is today the most common Agile version, version of Agile being used. And they also, though, had a, a, a large plan-based project management environment. And that had been sort of the legacy of the organization, a good, solid PMO within within the, the organization. Strenuous budgeting processes in place with all sorts of tax accrual, obviously doing that so that they could actually use those tax accruals in you know for their for their tax filings. So all very important to them how that works. So there could be nothing that would imperil their their ability to do tax accruals. And sometimes you hear about organizations that think they can't do Agile because they can't then do accruals and and use that in how they actually do their financing. And that's that's I think a a misperception because this obviously went into place. In their case, significant discovery was still going on, which required a lot of rework. And, and they were in the process of actually writing code, what, what they called build, but they were still defining, designing, and developing all at the same time because of all of this discovery stuff. Experience-based estimation had been used. They had done a lot of bottom-up planning, and including trying to maintain a 5,000-line Microsoft Project schedule. And while I have nothing nothing against Microsoft Project schedule, I have a copy on my laptop. In this case, it really wasn't working. And especially since this was a multi-year project, and that level of granularity multiple years out was at best suspect. So this this scenario precipitated the involvement in melding agile and plan-based estimation. So based on that, we came up with a framework for a solution. So if you're following along at home and you just want to now put yourself on mute, uh, here's the framework. The framework basically was a multi-level framework, backlog level release planning with estimation. Now, we'll talk about that word estimation a little while later, but it's important to know that a top-level view of that backlog was taken. Each individual story on that backlog was estimated and and then used that for release planning. That was followed, as one does, with sprint level planning, focus on the nuances that tasks bring out. So that first level, historical attribute-driven estimation. For those of you who are into the CMMI world, recognize that what I just said really starts to dovetail into some of the attributes that we'll expect for good estimation with CMMI. Whereas when we get to a sprint level planning, that's crowd-based planning, crowd-based task level estimation driven by team's experience. So I'd suggest what we have here is a framework that embraces the best of all worlds. Now, that's the punchline. 
we're going to walk through how we got to that punchline throughout the rest of the process. But, but remember, you know, the term agile has probably more connotations than Carter has little liver pills at this point. The, you know, whether it's, it's how work is organized, the speed at which work is done, or a radical rebuild of all of the methodologies within the, in organizations. So, but, but at this point, I would suggest that Agile is maturing. Agile is pulling away from being that, that stuff that happens out in the hinterland, out on the edges of the periphery of an organization, and now is becoming central. And as things mature, what we see is that individual tasks and, and different sorts of methods all start to meld together. Where a few years ago, if we were talking about the CMMI, we would have said uh, bi-directional traceability, lightning rod. In terms of implementing CMMI, I would suggest that the lightning rod within Agile really boils down to estimation. So why why is estimation important? You know, why do we want to do it faster or better? And obviously parts of that is truly all about an improved ability to provide status. Whereas at a sprint level, we're talking about being able to deal with sprint level plans, sprint level backlogs, and have that intimate conversation. There's still a requirement in many organizations to be able to provide sort of that external view, an outside view to the organization. And I believe that's the role that a, pro, a PMO, a project management office, really should focus on. But an estimate having that estimation level or that estimate view provides with a better ability to provide that status. Estimation really is is part and parcel of trying to redirect behavior. And having a good estimate, and we'll talk about what qualifies, at least from the SCI's point of view, what some attributes of a good estimate are. But having a good estimate really can help drive good behavior. Having a bad estimate, an underestimate, will cause significant higher, uh, significantly higher levels of technical debt by causing people to do the wrong thing when the right thing, the better choice, is actually known. Obviously, better estimates allow different teams, different sprints, different groups, all of which can e exist within large projects to have an understanding of where someone will be at a certain time so that as they accept work into their sprint or accept work into a release, they can be better coordinated. Long-term budgeting, early warning in terms of risk, all, all of those equally as important, but, but at the bottom line, I would suggest that going through the process of estimation causes you to have better knowledge about what you're going to do, where the holes are in terms of the stories, your backlog, so that it is fundamentally better than guessing. If we think about this from the point of view of organizations that that work for others or provide software or provide project works outside of of their local IT department, whether it's an internal an internal customer and I know people sometimes get excited about that word, but but what is the impact of ineffective estimating when it's something that's consumed outside? 